When it comes to quality construction in a hot tub, do jets really matter? Yes, they absolutely do, and let's find out why. Hey folks, Bill here again from Hot Tub University, and this is part three in our five-part series on how a quality hot tub is made. I did an overview video of the five things that go into making a quality hot tub, and I'll link that below. But in this video, we're going to take a deep dive into hot tub jets. For a very long time, all hot tub jets were made in a two-piece style. There was the jet itself, and then there was a large knot which held the jet in place. The jet was placed into the hole in the hot tub and sealed at the front with either silicone or a silicone type gasket. Then there was a silicone bead placed around the jet on the back of the shell and a large nut was put in place and tightened down like so. Now, sometimes they would use these compression rings. And the compression ring would base, the jet would still go in the same way. You'd still have the silicone bead. The compression ring would go on to capture the silicone and the nut would go on to hold it in place. In either case, you were depending on that silicone to provide a seal and stop the hot tub from leaking around the jet housing. The problem with this type of seal is twofold. First, if you're not very good at maintaining your water chemistry, then the water can actually eat away at the silicone or the silicone gasket. But even if you are really good with your water chemistry, these jets will move during the operation of the hot tub. First of all, every time you turn the pumps on or off, the jet will receive a very slight nudge, just a little bump like that. And it's due to the sudden pressure change of the water. This by itself doesn't cause a major problem, but over a number of years with thousands of cycles of turning the jets on and off, this is going to cause the silicone to eventually break down. The other problem is that in order to turn a hot tub jet on or off, get this over here. In order to turn a hot tub jet on or off, you actually rotate the jet. You turn it like this to turn it off. You turn it like this to turn it on. And if you want to remove the jet from the housing for cleaning or so on, you turn it even more, almost like opening a pill bottle. You push and turn to get the jet out of the housing. All this movement combined with the water plus the tiny jolts eventually cause enough silicone breakdown for the jet to leak. Now, here's a video that was sent to me by a hot tub service technician showing a jet to shell leak in a hot tub. You can see the way the leak is a minor drip drip kind of leak. And this leak in particular caused significant damage to the underside of the hot tub simply because it wasn't noticed right away. And this is the weakness of the two piece silicone seal jets. At some point, you are going to experience jet to shell leaks and once they start, they will be constant. You may have one or two start to leak and you'll have those repaired and then in a few months time, others will start to leak and it becomes a never ending cycle. Now, about 10 years ago, a company named CMP developed a compression fit jet, and these have proven to be far, far more reliable than the older silicone style jets. As you can see, there's no threading on this jet. It's not held in place by a large nut. Instead, it's held in place by pressure. During construction, this polymer collar is placed into the hole that is cut for the jet, and then the jet is pressed into the collar. Now, you can see here that this collar is significantly smaller than the jet body itself. So once this, and see how hard that is? to push in there, get that on the camera. Yeah. So once this is in place, you end up with a perfect seal. These jets have two major advantages over the older two-piece jets. First of all, these polymer collars are impervious to poor water chemistry. But most important, if this jet happens to move because of the pumps turning on or off or from turning the jet itself on or off, then the jet is actually going to seal itself. Take a look at the older silicone style seal next to a compression fit collar and ask yourself, which would you rather have sealing the jets in your hot tub? Now, 
One other advantage of compression fit jets, which is actually a disadvantage from the manufacturer's point of view, is that compression fit jets require a strong shell. With the pressure required to press the jet into the collar, if the shell of the hot tub is weak, that amount of pressure is actually going to crack the shell. That's why a lot of manufacturers have not moved to compression fit jets, despite the fact that it's actually faster and more economical during the construction phase to build a hot tub with compression fit jets as opposed to the old two-piece style. It's just simply because they're a lot faster to install. They do cost the manufacturer a little bit more than the older style two-piece jets, but the difference is more than made up by the reduced labor cost of installing them. But they do require a strong, robust shell in order to be installed. So, when you're out hot tub shopping, remove one of the jets from the tub or ask the salesperson to do it and have a look around the jet body. The polymer colors of compression fit jets are typically a medium gray color and the visible portion is slightly thicker than a two-piece jet using silicone or a silicone type gasket. If you see that polymer collar, you know it is a compression fit jet. And the added bonus is if you see a tub which has compression fit jets, then you know it also has a strong shell. If it doesn't have them, then not only are you dealing with an inferior jet system, but you're also likely looking at a weak shell and your best bet is to go shopping somewhere else. I'm Bill, this is Hot Tub University. Have a great day.